So we've been looking at reduction to linear form. And in this video, I'm going to go through the whole process. Okay. So what happens is that a scientist has uh, recorded some data. Uh, they've plotted the data on a graph. And it looks like the data fits the curve P is equal to Ka to the T where in this case k and a are constants. So that means that if k and a are constant, then p and t are variables. So we then want to reduce this to a linear form. And so I'm going to take logarithms of both sides. We're going to take a log of p is equal to log of k a to the t. So the right-hand side logarithm can be split apart, so log of k plus log of a to the t. And the t can come down to the front there, so log k plus t log of a. And I'm going to rewrite it in the form of uh, y is equal to mx plus c. So log a times t plus log k. So y equals mx plus c, where the y and the x are the variables and they line up with the log p and the t because they are variables. Now, let's say then, um, now that it's in that format, I plot the points and they look like a nice straight line and it goes through 1.2 on the log p axis and 10 1.6 okay now what I want to do is I want to find the gradient of this line in order to find its equation so m the gradient of this line is the difference in the y coordinates so 1.6 take away 1.2 so 0.4 divided by the difference in the x coordinates so 10 take away 0 so it's just 10 so this if I multiply top and bottom by 10, is 4 over 100, okay, which is 2 over 50, which is 1 over 25. So m is 1 over 25. That is the gradient of this line. So that means that y is equal to m x plus c, which is the 1.2, where it's crossing the y-axis, or the log p-axis in this case. So in comparing this line and this line, the log a must be 1 over 25, and the log k, the log k sorry, is 1.2. So log of a is 1 over 25, and log of k is 1.2. So if I then rewrite these two equations in exponential form, that means that a is 10 to the 1 over 25, and here k is 10 to the 1.2. I now have values for a and k, and I can put them back into the original equation, p, is equal to k times a to the t. OK? That is the equation of the curve that would fit the original data. The original data that the scientist collected. And then we might have a final question, which looks something like this. Find p when t is equal to 20, for example. So I just need to substitute t is 20 into this. So when t is 20, if I substitute that into the equation using a calculator, then we've got 10 to the 1.2 times by 10 to the 1 over 25 and that is to the power of 20. And that is equal to 100. OK? And that 
is how we work through one of these problems. Now, I do suggest that you go through as many of the exam style questions of this as you can. It is quite a fiddly process, but it's not one block question. It's split up into several sections, an A, B, C, D, and E, for example. Okay? So just go through the process, uh, use the mark schemes that are available so that you know exactly what you need to look for at each stage.